<laughs> okay, so this is capacitor discharge, but actually everything that I'm going to say applies to all types of exponential decay. So it's a pretty useful video, for not just for the capacitors or the fields, electric field section of your physics, but also for your nuclear um, section as well. And even for SHM, when you come to do damping, follows exponential decay. And you need to be able to recognize an exponential decay and manipulate it. So exponential decay always follows a curve that looks something like this with time usually being on the x-axis and some quantity which is falling at an exponential rate. Uh, in a capacitor's example that we're going to use, it's going to be a voltage. And they follow equations that look like this. V is V0 times E to the power of minus T over RC, where this is your quantity at any time. This is your initial quantity at the very start, V0 here. Uh, this is the exponential number. And this 1 over RC is the time constant. OK? The time constant. So now I'm going to exclusively talk about capacitors, but everything that I'm going to say could be to do with um, nuclear or about, um, as I said, damping in SHM. The trickiest part is actually getting from this into a straight line model that you can use. So what I'm going to do is show you how to manipulate this so that we can actually get our good old y equals mx plus c graph and we can actually do uh, some maths and understand what that gradient and that intercept would mean. Okay, So we want to get this from this into a y equals mx plus c form. I hope you're used to. That's often the target in physics. Uh, so we can actually fit our real life situation into a mathematical model. So the hardest part is how do you kind of access these, this indice here. So E, the exponential number, is raised to the power of minus T over RC. And we want to manipulate the equation so that T and RC are actually on the, the, the line of maths. So, to get access to these ones, what we need to do is apply our inverse of e to the power of. And the inverse of e to the power of is the natural logarithm, or it's often referred to as ln. You'll find that as a button on your calculator, ln. Um, so, we take natural logs of the whole equation. Okay, and that gives us that equation there. So that is always the first step. If you need to rearrange for any one of these symbols here, you need, you need to just take your natural log and you always get that, regardless of what V or V naught are. Okay, they could be I and I naught, so current is proportional to voltage, or it could be charge, so it could be Q and Q naught. Okay, the, the maths is exactly the same. We always get this same thing. And this is due to our log laws, the log of uh, one thing times another thing is the log of one thing plus the log of another thing. So we, we, we can apply our log laws there just to get that. But if you just remember you, from this, you can always get to this step. It makes your math simple. Okay, so now the next step down, we can actually just move this around until we get that form that we're looking for, the y equals mx plus c form. Okay, we're going to have time on our x-axis, so we want to move time to where the x is. And we're going to have an intercept up here, which is going to be the natural log of the initial voltage. And this is our y value, so we can leave that where it is. So all I'm really doing now is just moving the equation around just so that it fits into this form. So I'm happy with ln v where it is. OK, but I want time to be where x is. OK, now if you can see what time is being multiplied by, time is being multiplied by minus 1 over rc. OK, so that is our gradient of the graph we're going to plot. And therefore, plus ln v naught is our c, or our y-intercept. 
So now, hopefully, I can just replace these letters on my model curve here, my straight line that I've resolved for. Replace y with ln v. Replace x with t. And our gradient with minus, because it's a negative gradient, 1 over rc. And lastly, to say that the y-intercept is ln v naught. Okay, so a very, very useful thing to be able to do. We can get to this, which is our gradient, which is resistance times capacitance. So very, very useful to work out what rc is. Uh, in other words, the inverse of the time constant. In practice, then, what you're going to do with any capacitor discharge circuit, you're going to take a set of readings for time, a set of readings of voltage, with obviously time zero, that is V naught, okay? And then learn your Vs so that you can plot the straight line graph there. Yeah, happy with that? And uh, that allows us to do calculations and check our values for resistance. Well, in practice, you can get resistance using an ohm meter or check the manufacturer's values of capacitance, which uh, would be an interesting comparison to work out what their tolerance is. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and get Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.